the new framework desktop might just be an Apple Silicon killer. Aimed squarely at the M4 Mac Mini and Mac Studio, this thing combines Framework's signature charm with AMD's new Ryzen AI Max Plus chips. So today we're gonna explore the potential Apple Silicon killer and take a look at its flaws, its strengths, and its performance. So let's start by putting it together. Now you guys know that I don't typically do unboxing videos, but when it comes to framework, I make an exception because it's just part of the experience. We've got a left panel, translucent. We've got an accessory box. Oh, that's bigger than I thought. SSD, okay, two terabytes. We've got a handle for the device. And then if we lift this off here, we should have the main body. Here's a CPU fan kit. Oh, look at that. There's the device itself, really compact. And of course, this is framework, so we get a little custom screwdriver that matches the aesthetic of the framework desktop. Gotta love the attention to detail. And we've got some stickers and our owner's manual. Wow, this is quite a lot to dive into, but let's start by looking at the device itself. We'll pull off this little protective piece, and that's it, there's the insides. <laughs> what other companies have you unboxed an already open computer as a part of the experience? This is a little bit larger in volume than a Mac Studio, but what I find super fascinating about the design of the Framework Desktop is in keeping with their whole motto of upgradability and modularity, this is a standard mini ITX board. So this is a Framework custom main board, but you could put any board that you want. So if you wanted to buy this thing, and then you know six years down the line, this has gotten slow, just swap it out, put in whatever board you want. If we look around the back here, we've got our IO, HDMI, couple of Thunderbolt ports, display port, USB, ethernet, and now it's time to customize. But first, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by the number one tool to keep your Mac running at its best. Clean my Mac. When it comes to your files, not everything deserves eternal storage. And now for the first time, Clean My Mac can connect to iCloud, Google Drive, and OneDrive. Just sign in with the desktop OneDrive or Google Drive app to easily connect to Clean My Mac and manage all of your files at once. And it adds to Clean My Mac's already robust series of features that will help you free up storage space and optimize your Mac. One of my favorite features is their easy junk removal tool that can free up gigabytes in just a matter of seconds. And of course, who can forget Space Lens, Clean My Mac's revolutionary way to visualize where your storage is allocated. Plus, you can round out your system protection with Moonlock anti-malware engine to easily sweep your system for malicious programs. So get tidy today. Try Clean My Mac for seven days free and use my code LUKEMIANI20 for 20% off. A big thanks to Clean My Mac for sponsoring, and now let's get back to the video. So let's go ahead and go through our panels over here. We have a CPU fan kit. You can choose from a number of these. I think I went for the Noctua. Ah, never mind. It's a Cooler Master. But again, look, this is a standard part, so you can use whatever you want. And we've got our finishing bracket here. That actually looks really nice. Okay, nice and easy. Let's go ahead and do the SSD now. Oh, look at that. It just lifts up right on a hinge mechanism. How easy was that? We've now got a fully built system. We've got a fan installed, SSD ready to go. Now, in typical framework fashion, if we look along the front of the device, you'll see two cutouts for the standard framework expansion modules. This is the same one that you can use across any of their models. So, if you have a bunch of extra ones, just pop them right in here. You can see they're even matched to their silver models. Look at that, nice and easy. The front of the framework desktop is another space that's fully customizable. So they've sent over these tile packs. So these go on the front of the device. I think they just snap right in, right? Yeah, look at that. Oh, it's a block of grass like Minecraft and a little heart. Oh. See, this is, I like this aspect of technology. It doesn't all have to be silver and space gray and boring. We can have a little bit of fun with it. There you go, look at that. I wish I could tell you that I had a plan or a strategy, but I really just kind of put them at random. And you know what, since we do have green on the front, I think it's only fair that we match that on the bottom. Look at that. Now the only thing left is to put on our side panel. There's, they've got a bunch of these available and this one is translucent. Ooh, I like that. This whole thing is so cute. It's like a little mini PC, but not like a normal mini PC that's just a little box. 
This thing actually looks like a normal sized computer that shrunk. So we should just put this in, press down to, uh, oh, there you go, clip that into place, and then we can put this top piece back. Look at that, it's just a little guy. Oh, I like this. And finally here, we've got a handle that can go on top of the device. Let's see how this works. Ooh, it's a nice little metal handle. You just twist on these little knurled bits and it screws right into the frame. This is a really good design. Very clever, good customization options, very modular. Now, is it as small as a Mac mini? No, certainly not. But the benefit of the framework desktop is in addition to being very compact, you do have all of that customization. However, there are some trade-offs because unlike a typical framework device, this thing is, well, it's less upgradable than a framework laptop, which is a bit perplexing. But let's get to the bottom of it because at its core, it's the chips that Framework chose to go with for this machine. They're AMD's new Ryzen AI Max Plus chips. This is the highest end configuration with the 395 chip that comes with 16 CPU cores and 40 integrated GPU cores that are far more powerful than any other integrated GPU that you're gonna find out there. And on top of that, this thing is sporting 128 gigabytes of non-upgradable LPDDR5X system memory. And I say that because this chip is sort of aimed squarely at Apple's M4 Pro and Max. It has an integrated GPU that's really powerful. It has built-in system memory that crucially is shared between the CPU and GPU. So you can dedicate as much as 96 gigabytes of that memory to the GPU. Hence why they call this the AI Max series because it's very focused on not just computational tasks, but specifically AI. It's an interesting choice because Framework's whole motto is radical upgradability and modularity. I mean, they have replaceable graphics cards in a laptop on the Framework 16, but the Framework desktop weirdly has kind of the same amount of upgradability as the Mac mini. You can swap out the storage, but no RAM, CPU, or GPU. So it's, I, I think it's an interesting choice. I also think that it's a really interesting chip and I've spent a bit of time benchmarking it and testing it and I've found it really, really impressive. In Cinebench 2024 on the multi-core, the Max Plus 395 is basically tied with the M4 Max. And in Blender Classroom on the CPU render, it's actually faster than both the M4 Pro and the M4 Max, and not by a small amount. We're talking almost a minute faster than an M4 Max, which is really impressive. But what I find very interesting about this chip is that like the M4 Pro and Max, it's also a mobile chip. So even though it's here in this small form factor desktop, if you go into the settings, you get all of the Windows power management tools that you would expect on a laptop. You can change the performance mode to consume more or less energy, which seems weird on a machine that's plugged into hard power all the time. But the result of that is it's surprisingly comparable to Apple Silicon and it has a lot of those same benefits. But because this is an x86 machine, it's honestly quite a bit faster in native applications. For example, in gaming, I was able to completely max out Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p and get 120 FPS. I mean, this is seriously impressive performance for an integrated GPU. And if we wanna play a Mac compatible game like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, you can really see the difference in optimization. As powerful as the M4 Max is, it's kinda of hard to just beat straight up old optimization, 138 FPS compared to 115. And that's the full fat 40 core M4 Max, by the way, not the binned version. And then of course there's AI, that's kind of the main purpose of this chip and it performs really well. In the Geekbench AI single precision score, it's beating the M4 Max. In the half precision score, it beats the M4 Max by even more. In fact, the only area where it doesn't clobber the Apple Silicon chips is in the quantize score, where the M4 Max scores quite a bit higher. But overall, in this highest end configuration, while well, I was expecting to compare the M4 Pro Mac Mini, we really should be comparing an M4 Max Mac Studio. However, that comparison also applies on price because this thing doesn't come cheap. As I have it configured with the AI Max Plus 395 with 128 gigabytes of system memory and two terabytes of storage, this thing is gonna set you back about 2,200 bucks. So on the top end, we're definitely able to compete with the entry-level Mac Studio at around the same $2,000 price point. 
but of course, we get a ton more memory and a ton more storage than the equivalent Mac Studio. So this, it's a really interesting machine. And I'm very impressed by the performance. I'm very impressed by the design. However, it does irk me a little bit. For a device from Framework, the only thing that we can upgrade is the storage. I think that's kind of a, a core component of what makes Framework different from other companies. And while I appreciate the customization, you know, I think it's a really nice feature, it, it, it's not quite on the same level of radical modularity that you will find on their 13 and 16 inch laptops. And I think that's a little bit unfortunate. And now granted, part of that is because of the chips that they're using. If they had gone for a traditional CPU dedicated GPU setup, then it would be a different story, but they probably also wouldn't have been able to make a device this small. So I, I don't know, there's, there's pros and cons in both directions, but I, I'd love to know what you guys think. Do you think that the trade-off is worth it? I mean, keep in mind, it is a standard mini ITX board, so you could always buy this machine, use it, and then in a couple of years, just use it as basically a case and just put whatever you want inside of it. I'm also very curious what you guys think about the comparison with the M4 Pro and the M4 Max in the Mac Mini and the Mac Studio. I didn't really expect there to be devices that would give them a run for their money, but this actually does, not just in its performance, but also in its form factor. And that's unusual. But I think the real question here is, who is this machine for? I think there's plenty of answers if you look at an M4 Pro Mac Mini or at a Mac Studio, but this, I think it's a little less clear. Because it's using this mobile desktop hybrid chip, uh, it's not the best value. For $2,000, you can build a much more powerful gaming rig. So it's not really for gamers specifically. Uh, it's definitely good for people looking to get into AI because of that 96 gigabytes of shareable VRAM. I'd love to hear what you guys think of this device and framework's approach to building a desktop. Because of course, desktops historically, on the PC side anyways, are fairly upgradable. So confusingly, Framework, the upgradability company, has built a less upgradable desktop, but I still think that it has merit. And I'm also curious to know what you would pick between this well-specced Framework desktop and let's say a base M4 Max Mac Studio. Let me know all of that in the comments down below. Big thanks to Framework for sending this machine out. It's been very fun taking a look at it. And a big thanks to you guys for watching. And with that, I'll see you all in the next one.